So, what is dyslexia and what causes it? Well, dyslexia is what it says, really. Dyslexia means difficulty with reading. And most people with dyslexia, that's how it, it shows. However, it can mean a whole lot of different things. There are some people with dyslexia who actually read quite fluently, but it usually goes along with difficulties with memory and organisation and sometimes putting things into time and sequence. I think it's just a tiny, tiny difference with the way the brain functions. Mm -hmm. Really tiny. It has nothing to do with intelligence. But it can make an awful lot of difference between tasks like reading that need an awful lot of concentration, sequencing and focus. Is it genetic? Well, it does run in families. I think it is genetic, but it's possible to overcome it. And I think that there is a physiological thing that would affect genes, and that is that a lot of learning difficulties, including dyslexia, sometimes mean that there isn't enough omega-3 essential fatty acids in the diet, and that can help brain function and learning quite a lot. That's been proved. So, like, because it's genetic, would one seem, would, would it be able that one sibling would get dyslexia and the other wouldn't? Yes, that's quite possible. I'm sure it happens a lot. When you have dyslexia, are you more advanced in other subjects? Well, you may be. It depends. For instance, a lot of people think that dyslexia is to do with the left-hand side of the brain not working quite so well. The left-hand side of the brain is the, is the one that controls order and logic and sequence, which is what maths and computing and learning to read is all about. Whereas the right side of the brain um, is to do with visual spatial awareness. And a lot of dyslexic people do have right brain strengths. <laughs> For instance, there are a lot of actors, artists, mm. entrepreneurs, you know, business people like Richard Branson and sports people who are good at visual spatial awareness but not necessarily um, good at reading and writing and they can overcome this. A lot of cr the, There is evidence to suggest that dys overall dyslexic people are more creative, they're more highly creative and that's where it comes out with artists and even poets, for instance, Benjamin Zephaniah is the poet and he's dyslexic but it seems that his creative side overcomes his mm. his spelling difficulties so like how many people are dyslexic like how many dyslexic people are there well it some people think it's as many as four out of ten it's certainly one one in ten which means that in every class in school there are three dyslexic people to some degree or other obviously it's a question of degree and some people are very, very dyslexic, and others, it shows less, but it's still there. Can you stop or overcome being dyslexic? No, I think it's always with you, but there are lots of ways now that you can overcome the difficulties that it presents. And one of them is, in, in terms of reading and writing... IT is, is brilliant because you can now get screen readers. You can scan a book or a document or a newspaper onto the screen and then you can get a screen reader to read it. You can download them for free. And also, increasingly, voice entry software is available which will just photograph um, a document and then it will read it to you. And you can just speak into it. Like mm. um, Dragon Dictate, you can just speak and then it everything is the file comes up on the screen once you're used to it, it takes a bit of getting used to and the file comes up on the screen without spelling mistakes or punctuation mistakes so I think myself that this is the way forward for everybody really mm. and that this, it's really sad that there's still such a barrier sometimes for some dyslexic people when there really is no need for it anymore Okay, thank you for coming and for your time <laughs> Not at all, it's a pleasure it's very nice to meet you